What if I told you your next surgery might be performed by a robot and your future job won't even have sick days? Sounds far-fetched. Well, hold on to your stethoscopes because that future is already knocking on our door. AI is revolutionizing medicine and it's about to turn everything we know about healthcare on its head. Hello, my brilliant Bunsen burners. Theodore here, ready to blow your minds with today's deep dive into the wild world of emerging medical technologies. We're about to explore a future where your next operation might not have a human doctor, and your next job won't even have sick days. It's a brave new world of healthcare, folks, and it's both exciting and a little terrifying. So let's strap on our lab coats and dive into this medical revolution, shall we? Ready to talk surgery. Today, we're diving deep into how AI is transforming the operating room. We've got research, industry analyses, the whole nine yards. And let me tell you, this is not science fiction anymore. It's incredible, isn't it? The speed that AI is moving from research to the real world, like right into the OR. We're talking about tech with the potential to completely change every single part of surgery from the first moment a patient walks in to post-op recovery, everything. Yeah, I was floored when I saw that AI can now detect lung cancer from like CT scans, 95% accuracy, they're saying, which is even better than human radiologists. And that's just one example. Imagine what that kind of accuracy could mean for how early we can diagnose and treat things. Huge. Early detection is everything. And AIs is giving us these tools that are just amazingly accurate, so efficient, and it's not just reading scans. It's think of any step in a surgical procedure, AI is going to have an impact. Okay, so let's break that down. We're talking pre-op planning, post-op care, all of it. All of it. Even before surgery, AI is already helping surgeons plan procedures in this incredibly precise way. Algorithms that look at medical images and create these 3D models of the patient's own anatomy. So surgeons are basically stepping into what, like a virtual operating room before the real thing. That's wild. It is, and it lets surgeons anticipate problems, really refine their approach before they even begin, and that can mean fewer complications. Then there are the AI risk calculators, personalized medicine on a whole other level. That's got to be a game changer for sure. I read a study about an AI risk calculator. It was outperforming traditional methods by a mile. It looks at so many factors. It's like this really comprehensive assessment for the surgeon and the patient, right? Exactly. It's about giving everyone involved the best information, that clear understanding of the risks. But where AI starts to feel truly futuristic, got to be during the surgery itself. Right. Okay. The actual surgery. That's what everyone wants to hear about. Tell me about these robot surgeons. We've all heard of the Da Vinci system, but it feels like robotics is going so far beyond that now. It is. Companies like, for example, Think Surgical, they're making what they call open robotic platforms. They work with all sorts of implants, which is shaking things up in the industry. But it's the AI integration. That's what makes these systems truly next level. Okay. So break that down. What's AI bringing to the table during an operation? Okay, imagine this. A surgical robot, but it's AI guided, assisting a surgeon in the super complex procedure. The AI is enhancing what the surgeon sees, like in real time, highlighting important structures, even telling them what kind of tissue they're looking at. It's like having an AI assistant right there in the OR, guiding the surgeon's every move. Right. Okay, let's break this down. We're talking about AI that can perform surgery with incredible precision. It's like having a super surgeon that never gets tired, never has a bad day, and can access the collective knowledge of every operation ever performed. But here's the kicker. It's not human. Are we ready for our next operation to be performed without a human doctor? It's a game changer, but it's also a massive leap of faith. And the idea is that this level of guidance reduces errors, shortens the time the patient's under, and hopefully means better outcomes overall. What about complications? Seems like AI could have a role in preventing those, too. It can, yeah. Algorithms can actually analyze all sorts of data during the surgery, vital signs, blood loss, even how the surgeon's moving, to pick up on patterns that might mean a complication's about to happen. So it's like this early warning system, telling the surgical team, hey, heads up, before a problem even really shows itself. Exactly. And that kind of early detection. It's crucial for acting fast and heading off more serious complications. That's incredible. So we've got AI helping plan the surgery, 
guiding surgeons during acting as this early warning system. So what happens when the surgery is over? Does the AI clock out? Not even. AI is becoming more and more important in post-op care too. Like say algorithms analyzing patient data after surgery, they can actually predict how likely complications are. Infections, bad reactions to medication, that kind of thing. So it's almost like AI is the safety net, right, for the whole surgical journey. From planning to recovery, that's pretty amazing. It really is. A total paradigm shift in surgery, no doubt. And the crazy thing is, it's just getting faster. You know, it's one thing to talk about it, these systems and everything, but I'm curious, how are they actually being used? Like in hospitals, mm -hmm. in ORs right now? Mm. It's still early days, for sure but we're already seeing AI making a real difference for patients. Like in neurosurgery, for example, AI can look at brain scans with this incredible precision, help surgeons plan these super complex procedures, tumor removals, epilepsy surgery, things like that. Neurosurgery, that's about as delicate as it gets. To think that AI is assisting surgeons in those operations, that's, I mean, kind of mind blowing. It is. And it's not just the planning part. AI is being used to actually guide robotic arms during those procedures so surgeons can operate with even more precision, more control. So it's like the surgeon and the AI robot are working together, combining their expertise with the robot's accuracy. Exactly. And that collaboration, it's leading to some really incredible outcomes. Right. There was this recent case, surgeons use an AI-assisted robotic system, and they were able to remove a tumor from a patient's brainstem. That's, you know, the area that controls breathing, heartbeat, vital stuff. Wow. That sounds incredibly delicate. It was a super complex surgery, something that would have been, I don't know, maybe even impossible with traditional techniques. But with this AI robotic system, they got the tumor out. And the patient recovered amazingly. That's really incredible. It really shows you what this technology can do. Hmm. But even with all these amazing advancements, we've got to remember that this is still early, right? Yeah. Surgical AI is still pretty new. So what are some of the challenges, the limitations, things we need to keep in mind as it develops? That's the key question. One thing is we need more data. AI algorithms, they're only as good as what you train them on, right? And in medicine, that data can be all over the place. Complex, diverse, not always easy to get. So more data, but it also has to be good data, right? Uh, High quality, representing all kinds of patients. Exactly. Got to be mindful of bias in the data. That could lead to, you know, inaccurate results, even harmful ones. Another challenge is standardization. Right now, you've got tons of companies building these systems. Each one has their own algorithms, their own user interface. So it's like what the Wild West out there. Kind of, yeah. No real standardization, so it makes it hard for hospitals, for surgeons to even compare these systems. How do you choose the best one? And it makes it really tough to come up with good guidelines, regulations for using the technology safely. So standardization is key for making sure it's safe and it works. Exactly. And then there's the cost, of course. These AI surgery systems, they're not cheap, which means for some hospitals, some patients, it's just not accessible. That's a huge concern. We want these amazing technologies, these life-changing technologies, to be available to everyone, not just those who can afford it. Absolutely. And that's going to take, you know, everyone working together, tech companies, hospitals, policymakers, even patient groups, to figure out how to balance the innovation with affordability. It's a team effort. So we've talked about the amazing potential here, the challenges. So what does the future hold for surgical AI? It's a really exciting time to be doing this work. One thing I think we'll see is these algorithms getting even more sophisticated, more specialized. We're moving beyond AI that's good at everything to AI that's an expert in a specific type of surgery, cardiac, orthopedic, even plastic surgery. So like AI systems that are specialists, just like human surgeons. Yeah. Algorithms trained on huge amounts of very specific data. That means they can make better predictions, provide really targeted guidance, maybe even do some surgical tasks on their own. On their own. You mean robots actually performing surgery without a human surgeon? It's something to think about, for sure. We're not there yet, but the tech is moving fast. I don't know. It's exciting, but also a little, I don't know, unnerving. Like, what does that mean for surgeons in the future? And we need to be having those conversations as a society. What role do we want technology to play in our health? How do we balance automation with human expertise, with compassion? Those are huge questions. No easy answers. Yeah. But yeah, we need to be thinking about this now while it's still developing so we can shape it in a way that's good for everyone. Totally agree. And it's not just the big philosophical stuff. There are practical things to consider, too. Like what? How do we train the next generation of surgeons to be good at working with AI? Right. It's not just about being good at surgery anymore. It's 
knowing how to work with AI, how to use it to your advantage. Exactly. Surgical training, education, it all has to change to prepare for this new era of AI-assisted surgery. And then how do we regulate this stuff? Regulation, yeah, that's always tough with new tech. Want to encourage innovation, but we also need to make sure it's safe and effective. It's a tough balance, and there's no one right answer. But having clear rules, regulations, that's essential to making sure AI is used responsibly, ethically. And that patients are protected. Always. Yeah. That's what it all comes down to, better care for patients. Okay, so we've talked about the future of AI in surgery. But AI is just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to the future of healthcare. What are some of the other big trends out there that are changing how we think about health, about medicine in general? One that I'm really excited about is personalized medicine. The whole idea of tailoring treatments to each individual patient based on their genes, their lifestyle, all those unique factors. So moving away from one size fits all healthcare to something that's more individualized, more tailored to each person. That's it. And it's possible now because of things like genomics, being able to analyze someone's DNA to really understand their risk for different diseases. So we could know about potential health risks before they even become a problem. In some cases, yeah. And if you know the risk, you can intervene early, maybe even prevent the disease from developing at all. Wow, that's amazing, like getting a sneak peek into your own health future. But how does that actually work, personalized medicine? In the real world, can you give me an example? Sure. Think about a patient with cancer. Years ago, treatment was pretty much based on the type of cancer, the stage, that's it. Now, with this personalized approach, we can look at the tumor's genes, its DNA, and find the specific mutations that are making it grow. So it's like understanding the cancer at a much deeper level, like down to its blueprints. Yeah, exactly. And that means we can choose therapies that target those exact mutations. Treatment's more effective and potentially has fewer side effects because it's not harming healthy cells. So it's like the right drug for the right patient at the right time. That's the power of it. Personalized medicine is about moving away from that one-size-fits-all approach and towards something much more precise, targeted, effective. Sounds like it's already a big deal for cancer treatment, but what about other areas? Where else are we seeing this approach being used? Oh, it's being used or at least explored in so many fields, cardiology, neurology, psychiatry, even infectious diseases. Cardiology, what's an example of personalized medicine there? Well, there are genetic tests now that can tell us if someone's at higher risk for certain heart conditions, like hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It's when the heart muscle thickens and it can cause sudden cardiac death. Oh, wow. That sounds scary. It is a serious condition, yeah. But now we can find the people who are at risk, watch them carefully, talk to them about lifestyle changes. We can even put them on medication to prevent it. So it's not even treating the disease at that point, it's preventing it. Exactly. And that's a huge change in how we think about healthcare. Instead of just reacting, we're being proactive. We're preventing disease instead of waiting for it to happen. That's a pretty powerful idea. But personalized medicine, it's still just one piece of the puzzle, right? Yeah. What else is shaping the future of healthcare? Another big one is preventative healthcare. It's getting a lot more attention these days. Yeah, like they say, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. It's true. And we're finally starting to see that play out in healthcare. For years, it was all about treating diseases after they started. Now, there's this understanding that it's so much better and cheaper to just prevent them in the first place. So we're moving from like a sick care system to a real healthcare system. Exactly. And a lot of things are pushing this. Healthcare costs are crazy. The population's getting older. And we've got this huge burden of chronic diseases. Makes sense. All right. Picture this. Your next job won't even have sick days. Sounds great, right? But here's the catch. It means you're basically under constant health surveillance. Your workplace could know you're getting sick before you do. It's like having a really invasive, well-meaning doctor following you around 24-7. Sure, you might never get seriously ill, but say goodbye to those mental health days when you just need a break. Welcome to the future, where health is wealth, and privacy is, well, let's just say it's complicated. Preventing a heart attack is a lot easier and cheaper than treating one after it happens. But how do we actually do that? How do we make prevention a priority? That's the million dollar question. It's going to take a lot of things. Public health initiatives, changes in policy, and people changing their own behavior. So it's not just about seeing a doctor when you're sick. It's about making healthy choices every day. Right. Eating healthy, getting exercise, managing stress, not smoking, not drinking too much. 
All those things make a difference. And those are all things that we can control, right? They are. That's what's so great about preventative health care. We have more power over our own health than we sometimes realize. I love that. But it's not just up to us, right? We need systems that make it easier to be healthy. Totally. We need policies that make healthy food more affordable, that encourage people to get moving, that make our environment safer and healthier. We need a culture that actually supports people who are trying to make healthy choices. So it's about making it easier to be healthy. Love it. But even with all the prevention in the world, sometimes we'll still need medical care. And when that happens, we want the best care possible, right? Of course. And that's where another big trend comes in, patient-centered care. Okay, what does that mean, patient-centered care? What does that actually look like? It's about the patient being at the center of every decision. It's realizing that every patient is different. They have their own needs, their own preferences, their own values. So treating the whole person, not just their illness. Exactly. It's about respecting the patient's right to make their own choices, making sure they're involved in decisions, giving them all the information and support they need to make those choices. It sounds like it changes the whole relationship between doctor and patient. It does. It's about moving away from that old school model where the doctor always knows best. Instead, it's a collaboration, the patient and the doctor working together. More like partners. Exactly. And it means recognizing that the patient is the expert on their own body, their own experience. It sounds like it could make a huge difference, not just in how well treatment works, but in the whole experience for the patient. Totally. When patients feel like they're being heard, respected, included in the process. They're happier with their care, they stick to their treatment plans, and they get better results. So it's a win-win for everyone. Exactly. And it's something I think we're going to see a lot more of in the future. This has been an incredible conversation. We've covered so much. From the crazy advancements in AI surgery to these bigger trends that are shaping the future of healthcare. Personalized medicine, preventative care, patient-centered care, it's a lot. And it's a really exciting time to be in healthcare, for sure. There's so much innovation, and it's changing everything about how we think about health and medicine. It reminds you that we live in this incredible time, all this scientific progress, technological progress, mm. and it's really impacting people's lives. It's giving new hope to people who are struggling with these really tough diseases. It is. It's a privilege to be able to see these breakthroughs, to be part of a field that's dedicated to making people's lives better. Absolutely. But with all this progress, we have to be smart about it. We have to think about the bigger picture, right? The social impact, the ethical questions, the costs, all of it. You're right. We have to make sure that everyone has access to these advancements. It doesn't matter where they live, how much money they make, everyone deserves access. So as we wrap up this deep dive into the future of healthcare, what are some key things our listeners should take away from all this? Well, I think we've seen how AI is really going to change surgery. I mean, making it more precise, less invasive, and who knows, maybe even completely automated someday. But, and this is a big but, we can't forget about the challenges that come with it. Like, how do we make sure the data is good? How do we create standards for all these different systems? And what happens to the role of the surgeon as this technology keeps evolving? To a future where healthcare is more personalized, more proactive, and more patient-centered than ever. And on that note, that's a wrap on this episode of The Deep Dive. Be sure to subscribe to our show so you don't miss our next exploration of the most fascinating topics shaping our future. Until then, keep asking questions and stay curious. Well, my tenacious test tubes, we've just taken a wild ride through the future of healthcare. From operations without human doctors to jobs without sick days, it's clear that medicine is changing faster than a virus mutates. As we wrap up, I can't help but wonder, in our quest for perfect health, are we opening Pandora's box of ethical dilemmas? Only time will tell. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and for the love of science, stay curious. This is Theodore. Signing off and reminding you that the future of health is in your hands, or maybe in the cold, precise grip of a robot surgeon. Stay healthy, my friends. Mm -hmm.